Hello everyone and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program 1.6 with Kerbalism. In this episode I want to send over some tools for our Kerbals on the Minmus station and to that effect we have a KIS container with uh, some electric screwdrivers, wrenches, some lights, some handrails, uh, an extra ECLSS module just in case, uh, some RCS thrusters, we know we've got one that we need to remove, and some solar panels because they're likely to break too. And uh, yeah, so we're going to send that over and we also need to bring at least one Kerbal back. I believe that's Bill or Bob? Probably Bob. Um, yeah, uh, we will send an engineer and a scientist and that should do the trick. We do have a controller on this. So yes, Probodoba 9 Hex, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, Gemcal or Defen are our scientist options. Looks like Defen has less experience. We'll go with Defen. Hopefully that also means less radiation. And engineer-wise, they all have quite a lot of experience. I'll go with Dunfrid. Okay. So just those two crew members. And this is a different configuration than the previous bopper. Uh, we are, uh, well, we're going with this. Obviously, there's this tank that we're going to dock to the station and leave on the station, so that'll be permanently attached to the station. And I'm trusting that uh, just having a docking port here between this and the heat shield is sufficient to get it off of there. If not, I'm in trouble. Otherwise, at the bottom, we're using uh, two of the Bobcats, uh, four nozzles altogether, and uh, six Reliant engines. So I better watch out for the whole you know, tilting thing. Gimbal might be a little bit touchy. Hopefully the Bobcats can hold it. And yeah, so a little bit different than usual, but it should work out. And certainly the Delta V looks promising. So uh, with that, let us launch. Okay, so here we go, SAS. Oh, still in time warp. SAS on, throttle is up. And... Ignition and launch. I have added a few mods in here and I've updated the mod list. Uh, one of them is Ship Manifest, which I anticipate will be useful. Another is Stage Recovery. Uh, I thought of making this stage a recoverable stage. That may come later. It's all attached. This is these aren't uh, separate tank, uh, separate boosters, so it would all come down at once. The problem is I haven't unlocked air brakes yet, so I decided not to go with that just yet. Nope. Need to turn a little bit faster. I would prefer air brakes. I would prefer to actually verify that the thing can be recovered before having stage recovery do it. Something else I'm contemplating, and I don't know how you feel about this, is actually uh, at some point... Oh, okay, it's wiggling too much. Uh, I'll have to take it manually. But um, wrapping up existing missions and actually adding in real solar system. Because eventually I want to see how Kerbalism works in real solar system anyway, I won't be, wouldn't be putting in realism overhaul yet. Uh, just real solar system. We've already got Copernicus in here, which real sol solar system depends on. So we'll use it, we'll be using the stock parts in real solar system. Probably Ferrum Aerospace would be a good idea too, given the different scale of the atmosphere and everything. But that won't be imminent or anything. We'll try and get through what we've already set up as such. I don't know what happens to things if you add in real solar system? Who knows? It'll be interesting to find out. So here we have a poodle stage. Okay, at this point I would like to toss off the nose cone. Later on we'll use this configuration to bring up more cargo than just this. This is capable of lifting quite a lot more. But yeah, that's the one thing 
it's not too much of a challenge to do this stuff in the stock system, even with Kerbalism in. Now, I could have some extra failure mod, but that might get confusing. Okay, off-plane transfer doesn't seem to be a good idea. Okay, we are on our way to Minmus. Okay, we're going to have to do a mid-course adjustment. Not really mid-course, I decided I'll just plot here. Probably not the most efficient thing to do, but we've got a surplus of Delta V. RCS malfunctioned on Cargo Bopper. Mm. Ah, this one. I see. We can repair it though. So, um, Dunfred. Okay, repair RCS, all good. Continuing on to Minimus. Oh, your freight station is right there. We can see the spec thanks to distant object enhancement. Oh, we lost the spec though. Okay, we are gonna dispose of the poodle stage, it looks like. Periapsis is negative. Okay, good. Uh, for a sec there, I was worried I decoupled the KIS container. Okay, well, this is one of the fringe benefits of using the spark engines on the side here. So let's just go negative target velocity. Oop, went too far. But from here on, let's control from where we're going to dock this and use RCS instead. The RCS is thrust limited right now to 50%. Okay, docking port selected. Hopefully we've got enough standoff distance. We can see the messed up RCS port firing. Alright, let's turn RCS off. And uh, who do we have in here? We have Bob in here. And Bob is the person we need to send off the station, I think. Because of radiation. Oh, Deffen has 48%. Well, Duff Deffen's coming back. We're just going to bring Deffen straight back. Dunfred's got 27%. At least there's going to be two scientists anyway. You know what? Uh, we'll, we'll just bring Dunfred back. We're going to bring Bob back and we'll leave three on the station. That's good enough. So... We now have ship manifest sounds for the transfer. Okay, and where is our other scientist? So Fobri's there. So we'll still have two scientists on here, so that's fine. Well, we brought Dunfred all the way here. Uh, we might as well have Dunfred do the EVA to get that RCS port. Now let's see Dunfred's inventory. Whoa, why is that image all messed up? That is... Oh, it's very shiny and I guess it's taking the image of Dunford really close to the module? I don't know. Hmm. Okay, we need to access this inventory, grab a drill or electric screwdriver. Oh, I think this is buggy. <laughs> Uh, I, I didn't want all four screwdrivers, actually. Okay, these three I want to have go there. And this one I want to equip. All right, all right. Now we're getting somewhere. Now, can I just destruct that one? Heck, there's a lot of things on here that we could just destroy or pull off. 
Okay, it looks like I can't just destroy it. So grab and plop. Okay. Now I have a question. Is that RCS thruster still busted? Now that I've plopped it in here, if I put it back on something, does it work properly? Or is it still busted? Hmm. Well, only one way to find out. Let me get it a good position here. Not that we need it on here, but I mean, just in principle, I'll put it in, back in the same place. Um, H2 attach. Up, oh, it's still busted. Okay, well, that works as it should. No cheatiness here. I really want to sort of send that one RCS block into space or, you know, just sort of get rid of it. There ought to be some way of destroying it. There used to be a destruct thing. Is that just a USI thing? Maybe that's just a USI thing. Speaking of stuff we're going to have to add. Well, anyway, we'll be bringing that thruster back down with us since uh, Dunford is going back. But let's have Dunford uh, stow the electric screwdriver. We don't need to bring that back. Well, I'll just use the last slot there. Okay. All good. Board. All right. Okay, so my other question, will that docking port release properly? Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. No, no, no. I, did, I didn't want to stop it. Stop it. Stop it. That is not necessary. Left shift for some reason. I keep hitting it today. Okay, decouple node. Yes, it released a pod, but not in the most elegant way, I have to say. Hmm. But it works. Oh, the pod was actually flipping for some reason. Oh, it was still on negative parallel, I see. Okay, well, it is off. Let's get the solar panels extended. And it has tons of fuel to get back. But this time we're not dumping the service module. Before we had the service module separate and the heat shield was directly on the pod. This time you'll notice we're trying to bring the service module back and we're hoping these engines don't explode. That's a different thing and that's why I have this RCS configuration like this. Do we have enough parachutes? I'm not entirely sure. And probably not. So maybe we should dump the fuel or otherwise use the engines to help land, which is possible. The Sparks have good sea level ISP. We're currently reading the thrust at uh, around Minmus. Hmm. But uh, the good thing is, in a pinch, I can just dump the fuel and mod propellant with uh, ship manifest this time. Much better. But first, let's just get back over to Kerbin. Yeah, I'd say each radial parachute can handle maybe two tons tops. We're way above that. Okay, but here we go back home. Maybe we should just make orbit around Kerbin and do something different. I don't know. We've got enough fuel to actually get into a low Kerbin orbit. Maybe we should dock them to uh, our Kerbin orbit station and fix things up. I should have left the drill with, uh, or electric screwdriver with Dunford. Rendezvousing with the Kerbin Orbit Station would be a little bit difficult, though. 
we're coming in with rather a severe inclination. It is not a polar orbit station. We could change that inclination right now, though. It wouldn't cost too much. Maybe I should do that just in case. I'm sort of waffling as far as my intentions are concerned. Okay. Correction. Not perfect, but still plausible. Now, do I go straight into the atmosphere or do we dock at the Earth orbit station? Hmm. Maybe I should focus on Kerbin Earth orbit, I said. Kerbin orbit station. And see what's what. We still have a fair inclination. Kerbin station 1 there. So let's say we did that maneuver, and then right here, brought our orbit down. When you sum up all the burns, we have like just enough if we use our monopropellant for some of it, so that's a little bit touchy. But we could always use the monopropellant to deorbit if we if it turns out we can't rendezvous. So we'll try a rendezvous with Kerbin Orbit Station, and uh, that'll be a first, right? Visiting two different stations around two different bodies. Not your normal sort of mission. At least not so far. And this is sort of the harder way to do it. The easier way is to handle the Kerbin orbit station first and then transfer over to Minmus and visit that station. We've got a lot of stuff busted on our probes. I don't even know what kind of state they're in. Now one downside to adding real solar system is the contract system has probably got to be totally messed up. Because that's all expecting Kerbin system stuff. We'll probably have to save a lot of money first. Defin Kerman has been exposed to intense radiation. Gosh darn it. I guess more than 50% is intense radiation. Well, Defin's coming back down, but we might depart. Well, no, they're all in pretty bad shape as far as radiation's concerned. We're gonna have to rescue more Kerbals. I mean, there's no avoiding that. We just have too many Kerbals with radiation. Now, as somebody mentioned, uh, a number of people mentioned, a uh, part that could remove radiation, but also there was an expression of doubt that it might work with the lifetime radiation thing. It's pretty clear Kerbalism expects you not to have the lifetime radiation thing on, but um, in my view, that's the whole point, uh, if I'm going to use it in real solar system and realism overhaul and everything. Interesting this one isn't firing. Or maybe it just doesn't look like it's firing. This is going to be a rough rendezvous. Ooh, 186.4 meters per second difference. Hmm. Well, oh, it's going flying by. It's flying by. Oh, geez. Oh, that's the end of our main engines. I sure hope there's fuel on board the station. <laughs> Hmm, I don't see the marker, so I'm gonna have this hold on. Station. Okay, well that needs help. Uh, can you turn at all? You don't even have RCS, do you? Let's see what we can do here. With the twitch engines. At least it's still functional, sort of. It's still a controllable, maneuverable spacecraft, though. One ECLSS unit down. Okay, this is all off as far as Smart ASS is concerned. All right, we've docked. Uh, there's no more nitrogen. Oh, not again. Uh, well, um... Let's keep it depressurized then. Treadmill malfunction. Is it sucking out? This socks, uh, This nitrogen is being sucked out. Okay, hold on. Um, disable cross feed. Will that stop it? 
No. Oh, this got depressurized because of that side. Mm, there's no way it's got enough to actually fully repressurize. Can't disable habitat while crew is inside, but we just want it depressurized. We've, we've done that before. Oh, great. Uh, well, no, I could turn off pressure control. Nope, apparently not. Well, we're going to have to try and bring them back. All right, so we'll give them a little bit more fuel so that they can run the main engines. Okay, repair treadmill. The treadmills always need repair. Seems like we've got a broken solar panel. And I guess extend again. Okay, that's totally busted. I don't think there's anything else on here we can fix. Now we're not going to get fully pressurized. I suppose we can jettison the heat shield. Let's see, let me undock. 408 meters per second is enough to deorbit. Well, let's give it a go. I'm just worried about the parachutes, really, whether they'll be enough. We're at 7.5 tons right now. Now, we could use a little bit of the fuel to soften our landing, but it's not going to be easy. Uh, these only provide 20 kilonewtons apiece. That's not more than 1G, so... And it's got to be tough having three of them parachute out. Yes, I thought of that. <laughs> Uh, on the bright side, maybe some of these other things will explode. I don't know. Maybe the spark engine or... Is it busted or is it just hot? I think it's just hot. Um, you know, nose go might explode. The uh, RCS ports might explode. So we might lose weight like that. I'm going to take the liberty of dumping the monopropellant, which will not be useful at this point. We won't dump the food, water, and oxygen. We would. I would have uh, had the Kerbal stay on the station if not for the nitrogen problem. Oh, I forgot to pull in the communitrons. Oops. They're broken. So the nitrogen problem was because the station was built before I adjusted the nitrogen, I guess. I don't know. Or I up even before I updated Kerbalism. So... More of an upgrade problem rather than an uh, actual glitch with Kerbalism. Let me get surface info up. Grasslands. Well, that's good. I'm gonna start running the engines now. Mm. Seven meters per second, it's safe. I'll keep running. I could dump the heat shield, but it's liable to just smack right back into us, so... We'll let it be ablative on impact. How fast would we be going if I shut the... Ooh, a lot faster. Nine meters per second. So, it's uh, cutting off about three meters per second. Oh, but we're using fuel too much. Ah. Uh, well, we'll hit the ground at 9 meters per second. Uh, I didn't manage to... <gasps> oh my god, it gave me a heart attack. <laughs> the heat shield was ablative. It was okay. Oh my god. Anyway, I need to manage the use of my spark engines a little bit better than that next time. But yes, ablative heat shield worked just fine. And our crew is safe despite the heart rending explosion right at the end there. Okay, recover vessel. Well, that's sort of been a little bit of an adventure, really. Um, Bob Kerman advanced to level 1, finally. Uh, he should get that just for the radiation. All right, uh, I'm going to time warp and then handle these maneuvers. Well, at least the Ike and Drez maneuvers. Um, those are probably just mid-course adjustments, so nothing too fancy, but we should pay attention to them and see that everything is on course. Oh my god. Oh my god. Something's happened. Uh...
I just turned to Euphrates Station because we had some failures that I wanted to fix. And, you know, we had time warped and everything. And something exploded. Now, our three Kerbals are still here. There's a busted RCS. But for some reason, the entire end of the station has gone away. Um, I guess the more important bits are still here, but uh, uh, the, the part of this station that's the equivalent of this side, why couldn't that tank have exploded? I want to get rid of that tank. But I guess the thing that exploded is over here. This this is what what went away. That's a lot of stuff. Nitrogen, oxygen, actually uh, some of our life support basically. I uh, I don't like that. Okay, I just reloaded, but we've got a Euphrates station here, but also a Euphrates station ship that's only been around for 39 seconds, so I think the explosion has already happened. Let me turn to it just in case. But there is another option. After completing the mission with uh, the Kerbals returning, I did zip up the save. Uh, yeah, it's messed up still. Okay, uh, let me try and restore the zipped up save and then see what happens. Because this is obviously a glitch and we will try to avoid it as, as much as we can. But we might have to accept the situation here. We'll see. Okay, maybe. Okay, I think this time it's still intact. All right. Well, good thing I zip up the saves, huh? Lots of, lots of critical failures, <laughs> aren't there? Hmm. Okay, first, repair that solar panel. Okay, RCS. There's something over there that needs... Well, that's dead, that engine. Well, if I could get that off, that would be awesome, but I doubt it. I don't know what I can do with that tank, which always ends up tilted despite changing its auto strut situation. I don't have a drill right now. I mean, an electric screwdriver right now. Hmm. Maybe I need to put in USI just so I can disassemble parts and get and recycle them. I heard that. The system has changed though to make it a little bit more complicated, so I don't know. It used to be that you would automatically get like uh, machinery or uh, something. I forget what the uh, part was. Now it's a little bit more complicated, though still sensible, obviously. I think they end up recycled parts. What, whatever uh, disassemble parts turned into, it was what uh, you used to inflate modules. I remember that much. Okay, well, let's see. Can we repair that? Nope, come on. Closer, closer. Okay, repair RCS. That probably meant that we were losing mod propellant throughout all that. Okay, anything else around here? Oh, because we don't have control... We can't harvest the food? That's a little bit weird, to be honest. I think that's what's going on. Well, we have control now. Yep. Harvest. Okay, 28 food was produced. And it's growing again. Alright, so we're done here. Let's turn to Ike Station and handle that maneuver node. And hopefully nothing is going to blow up. Oh, looks like this maneuver is actually in Duna SOI. Good times. Well, we've got a lot of problems with the Ike station. Uh, there's this solar panel's uh, malfunctioned. The ECLSS on the hitchhiker storage container there has malfunctioned. Um, this reaction wheel has malfunctioned. But... We did have backups, so everything's fine. 
not 100% sure why we had that solar panel in particular or any of these down here when we have four big ones down there. We aren't going to be going... Oh, this has us going retrograde. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Huh. Well, we have a chance of encountering Ike like that, but we actually want to get into orbit around Duna. What were the specifications for the Duna space station? We do have to get into orbit altitude below 140 kilometers. So, yeah. Well, for right now, we've got a Ike encounter. I'll just keep it like that. This should be out of Duna's atmosphere. And I don't know how they're going to count the below 140 kilometers. It's check marked already. So I don't know what that means. So let's say we did get into orbit and somehow retained our... See, that's orbit and it uh, keeps an Ike encounter. Two Ike encounters, in fact. Would that count? I don't know. But that's our maneuver to make orbit right there. Complicated as it is. So we'll add that alarm, but we have to take care of this Drez scanner first. The Drez scanner looks like it's in pretty good shape. I don't see any... Wait. Oh. Uh, critical failure on the data transmitter on the Probodobodyne Hex. Well, that's not the data transmitter we needed to worry about, so that's good times. Otherwise, in good shape. And this is a mid-course, a real mid-course adjustment to help us hit Drez. Solar panel malfunction on Jewel Orbital Sciencer. Jeez, all the Jewel stuff is probably doomed anyway just for antenna range purposes. Speaking of which, if I did install Real Solar System, I wouldn't have any antennae that could reach anywhere because <laughs> I'd still have the stock antennae. That's what Realism Overhaul is all about, incidentally. Realism Overhaul is the thing that adjusts everything for Real Solar System, especially the engines, but also antenna and stuff like that. Antennae and stuff like that. Hmm. Okay, well, that looks polarish. And pretty darn close, maybe too close. I don't know how high the highest features of Drez are, highest features of Drez are, because I hardly ever visit it. Well, it looks like we have enough to make orbit. That's probably too close for the scanner, though. We'll have to think about that. But anyway, there we have it. And I'm going to get rid of this alarm and add... Um, why don't we do the SOI change? Okay, back to Ike Station. Still quite a thing to send to Duna. I think our space program can be justifiably proud of itself and everything. Now let's take a good look at the contract and whether it gets fulfilled. Well, at least the orbital. Well, that's the thing. It says orbit time required two days. We're not going to see if we retain this here, we'll be encountering Ike in an hour. Well, wait, it depends on which time. This one's in three. This one's in one hour. Yeah, so so it probably wouldn't count. We probably have to avoid that Ike encounter, unfortunately. Okay, well it says orbit, but now altitude is not below 140 kilometers. And it's gotta make us get that apoapsis down. We're running out of fuel here. Will this end up just a Duna orbit station? Maybe. At least for now. 
You've got the little capsule at the top to do a return sample mission. I think we have to fly fly into Ike SOI, get some science, and then return that. Okay. Mm All right. It's checked, check marked that. And we make sure we need to make sure this is vessel type station now. I need a controller. There we go. Rename vessel station. Okay, it is counting down the time. But yeah, with 169 meters per second, we really can't transfer this to Ike, and we'll have to just use that little pod to fulfill, what was that contract? Explore Ike, and return to Kerbin from orbit of Ike. I don't know how much Delta V that return capsule actually has. Anyway, let's get this one contract done first. Okay, I handled the time warping, and... We are three minutes away from completion. Dinner's looking particularly good right now. Okay, I survived. It says you survived. Okay, I was only for two days, but all right, uh, fair enough. So we fulfilled the contract. Uh, this has been a pretty good episode so far, minus one glitch. Uh, we managed to do some KIS stuff for the first time, grabbing that malfunctioning thruster block, uh, we handled some maneuvers, and we fulfilled the contract around Duna. Um, let's do one more thing, and that's decouple this little probe up here and send it on its way to Ike and see if it can get there. We will have to return it from Ike back to Kerbin to really fulfill what I wanted to do, so the first thing I'm going to do is add that alarm. So, transfer window, Duna to Kerbin. It's going to be a while, so that, that part of it will have to wait. But we do have this other contract that says science data from space around Ike. And of course, we have to orbit Ike. So let's do that first. So on this little probe here, we've got little uh, ant engines and a whole bunch of fuel. Um... We do have communications. Hopefully that's good enough. Let's see. If that communication, if those arrays aren't good enough, then it's going to be a problem anyway. Well, just barely. 1%. 1%. Just barely enough to call back home. So we're going to have to watch out for that. But let's see if we can get it done. I guess there's nowhere for me to control from that's gonna guess this total delta V positive. Yep, okay. Well, we're gonna have to do everything backwards. If we take a look at the line back, uh, we should have communication over here. We have some goo, mainly goo. Not a whole lot of other science. That's a shame. I should have put the other instruments on here too. I guess I should do uh, do the goo around here too. Let's observe mystery goo. 39 science. We'll keep that. Oh, well, it's polar orbit around Ike, so we are not going to be blocked. We're going on the on the good side. 20 kilometers should be safe, I think. Uh, I probably should have uh, done one goo around, kept it, and then transmitted the other goo, actually. That'll be good enough. So now we just have to return to Kerbin from orbit of I to fill that, and once we recover this particular goo unit, we will fulfill the other contract here. So all is well as far as this Duna slash Ike mission, and we'll leave it here for now. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did enjoy this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.